Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Welcome to our service today. It's a delight to be with you and we are your hosts who will guide you through this service. My name is Ian. And my name is Eleanor. And the theme that we want to pick up today is how to be holy without being holier than now. And our text is continuing our studies in the book of 1 Peter. We're going to begin with you singing. And the song is obviously built on our theme today. It is holy, holy, holy. Now we move into the things that we need to know about practicing holiness here and now. So the things that you need to know. If you're able to, you can join us for a live face-to-face home group this Wednesday. Next Sunday is our mission focus. And we will be thinking about how much we have, by celebrating a fabulous morning tea, alas, by ourselves, but we hope to raise $1,000 every month so that we can share our wealth with the orphans in Myanmar. And then after church next Sunday, there will be a, a prayer meeting that focuses specifically on world mission. Part of helping our orphans is an additional uh, an amount over and above the thousand dollars a month that we hope to raise so that they can have a secure location the fence they have at the moment around two sides of their property leaves a little to be desired but they've started work on the other two sides and that's what we're hoping to achieve for the whole property that they're in so that they can have a safe and secure environment and you're welcome to participate in that but Everything happens by prayer. And so I want to lead you in a simple prayer. Please bow with me. 
Father, we want to come to you knowing that you are great. You are almighty, you are all-powerful, you are all-knowing. You created all things simply by the power of your spoken word. And so we know that you can do all things for us. And so humbly we would bring ourselves into your presence, knowing that as great as you are, you love us and accept us. Thank you for your generosity towards us. And so we would bring ourselves and offer to you the small worship that can rise out of mere mortals to recognize and appreciate who you are and all you do. But because we are mere mortals, there are so many needs that we have. And we bring these before you as well because you are all powerful. Oh Lord, hear our prayer for our world, a world that is broken by sin, a world that is racked by disease and we ask for your compassion to be on the whole world especially on your people who cry out to you surround us and protect us from disease fill us up with wisdom about how we conduct ourselves in this world fill us with your holiness that we might be more and more like you so that we might do your will, achieve your goals and please you in every possible way. Thank you that you hear our prayer for we ask these things in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have been generously endowed by our Lord. We've receive so much and so there's always an opportunity that we can give thank you for those who participate in the ministry of life church panania there are many ways that you can give thank you for those who are supporting the ministry of the church thank you to those who are supporting the mission of the church into myanmar thank you to those who are going the second mile in supporting the security fence and for those who've volunteered to help with the mortgage that the church has the lord will bless you freely we have been given and so freely we give our next song is one that you know very well and i know you'll be enthusiastically joining in to sing this and it does indeed fit with the theme that we have because we are told to be holy and so being is a doing word we can both trust and obey.
We come now to hear the word of the Lord as it's presented to us from the little scripture book called 1 Peter. Hear the word of the Lord. Thoroughly prepare your minds for action. Be sober. Lock your anticipation completely on the grace to be given to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not conform to the passions of your former ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's now explore what that means. We're told to be holy. So how do we be holy without being holier than now? Now, I know the world has this picture of holy people live in stained glass windows. But the reality is, no matter whether the congregation you attend is online or large or small, these people are the real saints. The people who trust and obey are the real saints. So what does it mean to be holy? The word holy in its narrower sense means to be different, to be set apart, to be something that is distinctive. So for example, in the Old Testament, God chose Jerusalem as the holy city. Now, as a city, it wasn't particularly different from the layout of any other city, but he chose it to be different because he would be there. And that's where the temple was built. Now, the temple was built in the same ordinary way that other buildings were built, but inside that there was a holy place. It was different. Everybody could go to the temple, but into the holy place was where something different happened so really it came to be to be holy is to be like god because there is no one more different than god is he is so unique and separate from everything of this world be holy means be different and become more and more godlike in all that we do now the term holier than thou is a biblical term we find it in the Old Testament book of Isaiah where some people are talking to God. God begins the conversation and he says, Here I am, here I am. All day long I have reached out my hands to a people pursuing their own imaginations, their own crazy ideas about holiness. Well, yet they worship in beautiful locations. They offer incense on elegantly built altars. They spend long nights in prayer and they say, back to God, keep away, don't contaminate me. I am holier than thou. Can you imagine this? These people have pursued their own ideas of what worship should be and now they think they are more holy than God. No wonder the term is used of, with derision. So how do we do it? How do we live a holy life? We're going to look at four things very, very quickly. The first of them is this. I am to live in holy relationships. And God is a God of relationships. If you want to enter into a relationship with God, there are just three words that you really need to know. And they are these. Sorry, please and thanks sorry means i'm sorry that i've disappointed you i'm sorry for the wrong that i've done the technical word is repentance leaving behind the things for which i'm sorry please means please accept me as i am accepting you the technical word is faith that we enter into this relationship with God and thanks means thank you for what you've done thank you for what you want to do thank you for what you are doing in my life and that's commitment admit believe and commit sorry please and thanks gets you into this relationship with God 
And so here we come into our text from the little book of Peter. Just as he who called you is holy. It's God himself who is holy. And so it's no wonder that when he calls us, the one who calls us is holy. The calling that he has on our lives is a holy calling. We are called to join him in holiness and particularly in a holy relationship. You were called into the fellowship of his son. So here's the relationship that God wants for us, that we become holy as we enter into this relationship with the one who is holy, God himself. We can get more than that. For we read, I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. For what purpose? For what purpose did he bring these people out of Egypt, out of slavery? Why did he redeem them? The answer is, so that I would be your God. So that we could have a relationship with him. So that he would be ours and we would be his. That's why we enter into holiness. That's why we're called into fellowship with his son. But notice the last line. It is fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, not my Lord, but Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so if we are going to enter into a fellowship with God through Jesus then we are also entering into a fellowship with others who call Jesus their Lord. And there are so many, many ways that we are told about how we can relate and be in fellowship with one another. And just, you know, you're already reading ahead of me over all of these. Can I suggest that just like a gemstone has many facets. Each of these statements is a facet to the gemstone that we call holiness. So what I'd like you to do is just choose one or two of those and find someone this week with whom you can share that one or two that you have picked so that you might enter into a more holy relationship with that person. Now we need to move on. And so the second thing that we find in Peter is, I am to think holy attitudes. Everything that we do comes out of the attitude that happens within us. And what happens within us happens out of the relationship that we first have. So what are we to do? We are to be holy and then in case you missed it, we're told again in the very next verse, be holy. This is who we are to be from the inside out. This is our attitude. And so my attitude is to be one of humble obedience, where we do what we are told to do. Be holy is a mindset that I'm to adopt, but be holy is also a command that I'm given so that I need to be obedient to that. Peter began his letter. Here we are, look right back in the opening verses, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And he talks about sanctification. Now you know already that sanctification is the same word as holiness. The holiness given to us by the Holy Spirit for what purpose? Why are we to be holy? How are we to be holy? What's the expression of our holiness? It is obedience. We are to be obedient to everything that God tells us in his word. And so the instruction, be holy, is not an optional extra. We are just to go out and do it. When do you think God came up with that idea of us being holy? It was a long time ago. How long ago? The Father chose us in the Son before the creation of the world for this purpose, to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now, if you've been a Christian a while, you've probably 
began to build your own personal discipleship as you've read other Christian writers. And one of them you will have come across is Oswald Chambers. Now look at the opening sentence we've got here. He said, God has only one intended destiny for mankind. Holiness. His goal is to produce saints. Another word for holy people. Now don't read on yet. Just, just stay with that and allow those thoughts to rattle through your mind. How significant is this? God has only one intended destiny for you. And that is for you to be holy. His goal is to make a saint out of you. Now, how different is that from the next sentence? God is not some eternal blessing machine for people to use. Now, although Oswald Chambers said that a hundred years ago or more, it's still more relevant today than ever, where we think, oh, God should bless me. God should answer my prayer. God should rescue me from this bad thing. God should do this good thing for me. God is not some eternal blessing machine for people to use. He goes on to say, He came to save us because He created us to be holy. And so we find the same thoughts echoed in Peter where we note thirdly that I am to function by holy actions. My actions are to be expressions of holiness. And so Peter writes, again we're still in verse 15, Be holy in all you do. The do is now the action. This is putting into practice the relationship we have and the attitude we have in very practical ways. But here's the interesting word to me. Not the word holy or the word do, but here in the middle, all. Being holy is not a purely religious pursuit in all you do. Because all you do is not just sit in church on Sunday. There are other things that you do. There are people to whom you relate. There are tasks that are before you. And in all that you do, all that you do, you are to be holy. Holiness is to pervade every single part of your life. And so we we read that... We are to be holy in all we do. And so that's what this looks like. You have good days and you have bad days. So does everybody else. Holiness looks like this. We are progressing in a general direction, but sometimes things go well and sometimes, well, it's just a bad day. And it's not just you, it's everybody else as well. And here is an opportunity for you to bypass, oh, I'm holier than thou, you fell today. But tomorrow it might be me. None of us can say, I'm more holier than thou. Instead, we are to encourage one another and look to one another so that we might have the general trend of ever upwards into holiness. Never step on someone who has fallen. Instead, let's lift up one another so that we might encourage one another towards our common goal. And so we are to listen to Peter, be holy in all that we do. And then there's one more thing. I am to live in holy discipline. And based on what we've just said, the discipline has to really be self-discipline. It might be fun to discipline other people, but that's not what we're called to do. We are called into a self-discipline. It's said to each of us, be holy. And you know why? Go on, have a guess why. 
because God says, I am holy. And you know, we're not called to be holy because there is some rule that says you must be holy. Well, that, that is true. It's not the main driver. We're not to be holy just because it's good for you. It'll make you feel good or be good. Well, that, that is true. It's not the main driver. And we're not to be holy because there is some reward at the end for holiness. Although that is true. It's not the main driver. Do you know what it is? We are to be holy because our Lord himself is holy. Verse 16 says, For it is written. So let's go back, all the way back to the Old Testament book of Leviticus. I am the Lord your God. Therefore, consecrate yourselves and be holy. For what reason? Because I am holy. If we're in a relationship with God, then his nature and character should be filling us up from the inside out. And that's why we began our service with this verse. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name, which means worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to see in God when we look closely at him. It's a beautiful thing to see in Jesus as we see him in action. It's a beautiful thing to see in the Holy Spirit as we tune into him. It's a beautiful thing to see in one another as we encourage one another to grow in godliness. The beauty of holiness happens, as we've just seen, in four ways. The beauty of holiness is our relationship with Jesus. The beauty of holiness is the attitude that we have towards one another. The beauty of holiness is in all our actions, in every way, every day. And the beauty of holiness is in our own self-discipline into godliness. So being holy means being different. Different from the person I was yesterday. More different than the person I was the day before. Being holy means growing into a godliness as his character fills me more and more from the inside out there's a supermarket that advertises itself as good different well we are to be holy which means different so let me pray for us father you've called us to be different from the world you've called us to be different from what we once were You've called us to grow into being a different community of people. You've called us to be holy just because you are holy. And we want to be less like who we once were and more like who we are going to be when we see you face to face. Oh Lord, may holiness grow within us every single day as we discipline ourselves to be more and more like you. And this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to our final song. And here is where we wrap up our service. The song is called Praise You, Lord. And the opening words are, I want to praise you, Lord. And each verse says, I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to serve you. But the words that I would like you to focus on through this song are the words that are repeated through each verse. Much more than I do. I want to praise you much more than I do. I want to love you much more than I do. Where I am at the moment might be okay for yesterday, but let's move on beyond this to be more and more holy. Praise you, Lord.
end of our service. Thank you for being with us this day as we worship. Now, as God says to you, go out and be holy. But please do it without being holier than now. The Lord bless you and keep you as you go forth into this week through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.